ask you a question today. And I am going to bet that it's a question that I don't think anyone's asked you recently. You ready? How's your fighting going? How's your fighting going? How's your arguing going? What was the last argument you had? I want you to think about that. So I want you to think about what kind of conflict manager you are, because guess what? The type of conflict manager you are, that kind of default that you go back to, it has a direct relationship on your success in college. I know that might come as a surprise to you, right? It might come as a big surprise, and I'll explain it in just a second. But as you're thinking about college, I know probably you're thinking about lots of things, $1,500 books, the ones that you're going to get, you know, 2.3 cents for when you sell them back. <laughs> Good thing we're not next to the bookstore anymore, right? <laughs> Further away. You're thinking about the social scene. You're thinking about the campus grounds. You're thinking about what food options are available. But there are two things that you're not thinking about. And I'm here to tell you today that those two things can have the biggest impact on your success in college. And you know what? They're not things. They're people. Yourself and your college professor. Your relationship with your college professor, you have to manage it nearly every single day or every time you're in class with them or when you're doing work for them. And so what I want to do is I want to help you identify three ways that you can use communication strategies to improve your communication with your college professor. You know, when you're in college, it's a lot different than high school, as many of you not, may know, but you're the primary driver of your education. You're the primary driver of your academic goals, and your professors are members of Team U. But the way that that has to go down is that you have to figure out how you are going to communicate with your professors to be effective in an assertive and professional way. So think about it. If you are, let's say, a putter-upper, you're the type of person that's probably going to just sit in class, and if you have a problem, you may not say anything, you may not ever let the professor know that there's a problem, and you're going to just sit there and just see, and you might even make little voodoo dolls of the professor, their family, their <laughs> minivan, their cat, right? <laughs> or, or maybe you are a sneaker-upper. You get pissed at your professor, man, you're telling everybody on campus, you're Facebooking it, you're doing it all, right? You're telling everybody, but you'll never tell your professor who's the person that you actually need to work it out with. And let's say you're a blower-upper. You are going to send that hate email to your professor. And you know what else you're going to do? And this will lead us to, our first, to my first tip that I have for you. You're going to use a lot of you language. You are going to use a lot of you language. Your lecture was boring. You didn't give me a very good grade. You're just being unfair. So what, the way you turn that around is by using I language. Now, I want, what I want you to do is a quick experiment. I want you to turn the per, to the person next to you, and I want one of you to make a you statement. And I don't want the other per, it could be anything from, you didn't call me last night, or you never do the dishes, anything. But the other person who's listening, I want you to not respond, but I want you to make a physical action with your body that shows how you feel or what you want to do when that person is saying that, okay? Some people go like this, or some people go like this. Whatever it is for you, just feel it and then see what you do. All right, ready? One, two, three, go. Somebody make a you statement to your person and then the other person make a physical reaction. What did you guys do? What did you feel like doing? Slapping. Slapping. <laughs> she turned away, right? Now, I mean, am I saying that you're going to fight with your professors? No, of course not. I mean, nobody wants a stone cold stunner on the first day of school or even the last day of school, right? But what I'm saying is this is the way that people feel when you use the word you, right? You feel like you want to go like this, or as my eight-year-old says, you put your stop sign up. When someone doesn't like what they're doing, you put your stop sign up. So what I want, but you know, you is a steady diet of language among college students. Again, you know, you didn't tell me that my assignment went well or your lecture was boring. And let me just qualify that replacing the I, you know, you know, in the way where you say, well, I'll use an I. I think you suck. <laughs> no, that doesn't work. Okay, so tell me, if we were replacing you, because you is blame, right? Blame, you did it wrong. But if we replace that with I, would it sound, what would it sound like? Instead of saying, you, you, you explained that assignment in a really confusing way, professor. What would, tell me what the I statement would look like. I didn't understand that you explained it. Okay, all right. What about, you know, you, you, you didn't tell me that I missed assignment number three. <laughs> well, what, what don't you say? You're, what are, what's the feeling underneath your... Your, your grade is missing. Surprised. You're surprised? Yeah. Okay, so tell me, tell me more. I didn't realize that I uh, didn't 
didn't have this turned in? My whole body just feels better hearing that. I mean, right? Isn't it just such a different way to go? When you start off with a you, nobody wants to give you a big hug and say thank you. And your professor is the exact same way. So that is tip number one, to try to rephrase issues that you have with an I. I'm, cons I'm concerned, I looked at my grades and I noticed that I'm, I'm, I'm not, I don't have a grade for assignment number three. Can you take a look for me? I, you know, I, I, I'm trying to do well in this class. I'm, I'm having trouble connecting to the material. Can you help me? So coming at it, and even if you're furious, es you know, to de-escalate and use I language. All right, let's move on to tip number two. Now we're talking about when you're in your relationship with your professor, right? Now let's dial back to the first day. You have a right to know who your professor is before you meet that person. Okay, so I'm going to give you a couple of first day tips. I'm not saying go stalk them at their house <laughs> or, be, or become a, an online stalker. What I'm saying that you need to, that you can do, go to their office, send them an email, and use your eye language and use your, you know, be, be connect, connect with that person. It'll make you feel a lot better, and it will. If you have to deal with an issue later, you kind of already have connected and know each other. So you say, hi, I'm Ellen. I, I'm going to be in your class. And this is before class starts. I'm going to be in your class this quarter. I would like to, I, do you have a copy of the syllabus? I'd like to take a look and, and get a head start. Now your professor may not have a copy of the syllabus. Ask them for one from next from last term. Things don't usually change that much, and if they do, or sometimes they do, but you'll find that on about that on the first day. But it's a really nice way to make a connection. And again, it could make you feel a little bit better about going into that person's class particularly if you had heard some things about them. Okay, so the final tip that I have for you today is once you're in your class, it's the very first day, you are, you've just received your syllabus, the professor's going through the syllabus, and you've got a lot on your mind that day because it's the very first day of school. One thing that you probably only have on your mind for a moment but may not deal with is the grade that you are looking for. You might be looking for a 4.0 because you have to keep your scholarship. You might be looking for a 3.5 because you need that to transfer into your next program. You may need a 2.5 because, frankly, you don't think you're going to be able to stand this class and you're happy with whatever you're going to get. Well, guess what? When someone is evaluating you and there is something at stake, you need to have a conversation with that person early about what that goal is. So I am going to tell you that on the first day, I want you to use your eye language. And I want you to go to that professor after class, make an appointment with, their, with them in their office, send them an email, whatever. <coughs> Hi, my name is Ellen. I have a, I have a goal here. I, I appreciated you going through the syllabus and our assignments. I need a 4.0. What can I do? Can you give me any extra advice of what I can do? I know for my students, I tell them, work on these things early, send, to, send them to me, I give them a date, I'll review them for you, and then we will have a feedback loop going. But if you do not let your professor know early what your grade goal is, because here's the, here's the opposite side of that. The opposite side of that is that, yeah, and I'm gonna tell you in 13 years, maybe 10, less than 10% of students actually tell what their grade goals are. But here's what happens the other 90% of the time. Week eight hits, and suddenly, you know, student one has finally paid attention to their grades, and they're like, oh, oh, oh crap, <laughs> yikes, what can I do? Well, we're at week eight. Or a student who thought that they were doing pretty, things were going pretty well, they have, one, they have one bad exam, and then that exam is worth twice what the other assignments were. Now, so much pressure is riding on the rest of that work. What do I do? And you're at midterm. Still, you can still pick up some pieces, but unless you communicate, it's going to be pretty difficult. So this is where, this is what usually happens. But if you have a certain grade goal, use your assertiveness and use your, your open communication and your eye language to tell your professor. So again, I versus you, getting to know your professor and make a connection on the first day, and also, once you get into that class, letting your professor know nice and early what your grade goals are. Your professor will have a heck of a lot more respect for you. You will more likely have a very, a much more enriching and engaging and fulfilling experience for yourself. And better yet, you stand to get far better grades. Thank you so much.